Welcome back. In this part of the lesson, we are going to do the oil pastel for our koi fish watercolor water pond. Okay? We left off here where we had just finished our fish. You can see the faint outline. I just kind of took my eraser and erased the most of the pencil line. And we are going to be doing the oil pastel. First thing you're going to need is you'll have some oil pastels at your table. You'll also want to have a paper towel to wipe off your oil pastels if they get grimy. Sometimes after sitting in the boxes, uh, the oil pastels can get a little grimy and you might want to wipe them off on your paper towel so that you can get a nice clean color before you start um, drawing with them. Also, you might want to have a paper towel sitting um, out so that once you get done with the part of your painting, you can set it over, over your uh, oil pastel so you don't get the oil pastels on your fingers. Okay. Now, some concepts we're going to talk about first is the idea of shape. Okay. In our picture, you're going to notice that the, the shapes of um, the colors on our koi fish are all amorphous shapes. What are they called? That's right, amorphous shapes. We're most familiar with geometric shapes, shapes like triangles, circles, rectangles, math shapes. But in um, our picture, we're going to use amorphous shapes, which are kind of like blobs. They aren't really definable shapes like a geometric shape is. Okay, and I challenge you to be using um, amorphous shapes for your colors. Then we're going to talk about pressure. Okay, when you use an oil pastel, you want to make sure that for this assignment, since it's a watercolor, that you want to use hard pressure. So if we think about light pressure and we're just pushing down a little bit like this, you can see the whiteness of the paper showing through. But when you press hard, you want to press really hard and squish all the oil pastel into the paper. So you can see the difference between pressing hard and pressing light. You can see that in my picture where I pressed hard, it will, it will be really bright and vibrant, which is what we want. Now along with that pressure comes blending. Okay, We're going to be using some blending here. Um, you can see it um, the most where I've got the black and the um, white and the orange and the white coming together. And so I'll use a little bit of black just for this part of the demonstration. If you're trying to blend and you're not having enough pressure, okay, you're not going to have enough oil pa pastel to smear together. And it won't look very nice. Whereas if you press really hard with your oil pastel, you'll have two nice strong areas of color and then you can use your finger to either blend them together to smooth out that line or sometimes you can even just use the oil pastel itself to kind of smear the line so that you have a smoother transition from one color to the next. So blending is going to give you a smooth transition from one area to the next and to do that you need to have hard pressure not light pressure on your tools okay so getting started uh, we're going to take this picture and kind of reproduce it here now you'll see in this picture where i have the white areas i actually used a white oil pastel okay so any place that you want to be white you're going to have to use a white oil pastel so i'm going to get started with my white um, I'm actually going to take that out because it's broken. And I'm just going to start here. I'm going to press down really hard and make my first amorphous shape. Now, for our amorphous shape, it doesn't really matter whether it's long on one side or short on one side or even how big it is on any side, just so long as you press hard. You'll actually see if I tilt my paper up a little bit, you can see that area that I just got done oil pasteling. It's kind of hard when it's like this but I'll tilt my paper up every once in a while to show you that. Okay. Now I'm going to take some orange and do my next shape here. Okay. As I do this, try to stay within your pencil lines so it looks neat and tidy and, um, and uh, it has just a nice feel to it. Now I'm liking that shape that I have going on there and I know from looking at it that I'm missing some oil pastel right there. So I'm going to take my white and go back in and fill that little shape in. Try to make your colors, um, your, your, the shapes of your colors, 
natural looking. That amorphous feel is a natural kind of shape feel. And you'll know, remember looking at the PowerPoint that those shapes aren't always regular. They're not always the same. In fact, uh, they're almost like a fingerprint for the fish. They make the fish um, really unique. And so you want both of your fish to have unique different shapes on them. Notice how I'm pressing really hard and getting a nice clean look to my areas. If your oil pastel gets dirty while you're oil pasteling, you can always take a leftover paper towel and kind of wipe wipe that off. Keep your fingers clean too. I'm actually gonna go like this to set my hand on. Okay, now I'm going to work on this other one over here.
Okay, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to tilt it up so you can see those white spots and how they are paint or they're oil pastel white. Get rid of all those oil pastel chunks. Now I'm going to take my black and do the outlining of my fish. So if I bring this one back in, you can see the outline around the edge here and we're going to do that. And I forgot two things. I forgot the little koi whiskers. One little whisker here and a little whisker here. I'm going to make them white and a whisker here and we're going to leave the other one off on the other side. Then we forgot to make the white rippled circles here for that koi that's coming up out of the water. So I'm going to make one ripple going around this and I'm going to make it thicker in the middle and a little thinner out by the edge. You can kind of see it there. And then I'm going to make the next one a little bigger. I'm going to pretend that I go off my page. You can kind of see how I'm going off my page there just to help you see it. And this one you really want to press down super hard so you can make sure that when the watercolor goes over the top of it it's um, going to be nice and solid. So there's my ripples of that koi coming up to the top. Now I'm going to start my outline and of course my eyeballs here that I forgot. Okay, here's my two eyeballs and my outline. Here we go. Okay, these little lines here. Good, and that concludes our oil pasteling for our koi fish pond watercolor project.